starts to say, it's your spirit starts. It's my therapy dog. That, that is a complete therapy dog. It, after a few minutes, I have this paw sitting in my hand. Just comfortable, happy. What happened to my associate up here, John? It was perfectly fine. Total, and you, you missed the puppy rolling on the floor. It was delightful. Uh, the picture comes from uh, Sherry's Mother's Day rose from uh, two years ago, and um, it was just very lovely. I want to have a conversation with you today. As Solomon said, there is a time for everything under the sun. Would you agree? And then he goes through the list. Uh, in fact, it was, I believe, the Yardbirds actually took uh, and made a top 40s hit out of that song, uh, There's a Time for Everything. Uh, and, and they were faithful, by the way, to every word all the way through. Um, and our praise team always did that song. We enjoyed it. It was a lovely song, actually. We just didn't put quite the same emphasis, Barry, that they had. Um, so in our conversation we're going to have today, uh, I'm going to walk us through the idea or a commitment corporately to making a safe church. Um, what makes a church safe? Why should someone walk through the doors? And, and I'm wondering where everyone who is supposed to walk through the door is. You know, normally we have a nice group, but, you know, uh, I, I'm going to pray for snow. I'm praying for snow, wind, rain next week for you, John. Don't do that. <laughs> no, they'll all come because there's no place else to go. Well, there is that. One would hope and pray for that. Um, I'm going to walk you through nine points, but I'm only going to just discuss two of them with you today. What does a safe church look like if we are all committed to it? Okay? I don't know what is in your mind, what you would think about that, but before I walk you through this, I want to just have a short prayer with you. Father, these are just words. In a few minutes after we read through those, Father, we want to step into your word. And my prayer is that your word would speak today, deep into our hearts and minds. But Father, may we look at this list as something that is really profoundly simple. But it comes into fruition because of the presence of your Holy Spirit. And may we be available and sensitive to the ministry of your Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's the first five. It begins with grace. Received by faith in Christ is preached from the pulpit and is the foundation for how people are treated. Are we grace-centered? Do we extend grace to any and all who enter in through the door of our church. It's a very simple principle. It's not really something difficult to do. And, and I think for the most part, you already understand this. But the second one is truth is preached without compromise. Uh, are we trying to take truth and, and make it compatible with the world? I think that was the challenge of the text that Marlis read to us. Uh, leaders are aware of their own weakness. I'll read it this way. We are aware of our own weakness. We are in a process of learning and growing. And I can't quite get it precise, John, but in the back here, how did you phrase that? Something to the, can we ever know? That wasn't quite right. You just made a passing comment that, that we are all in a process of unfolding open discovery. Yes, we're always growing. Always. Isn't that good news? And, and that is what makes our Bible study so important. That's what makes 
John sermons or guests or other sermons so important is that there is something in them for us to grow, to learn. And if we are humble and we are aware of our own weakness, listen carefully, how do we then change how we see each other? With an expectation of your perfection or an expectation that you come as yourself? And we are glad that you are here as yourself. We really don't want you coming to someone else. And unless you happen to have, you know, more multiple personalities, then we're happy to have someone else that is in you come, right? It's okay. We would welcome even that. Okay, that would be a good thing. Okay, number four, small groups are offered for support, teaching, prayer, training, and encouragement. And we have prayer here in the morning. If you come at nine o'clock, if that is something possible for you, we have our Sabbath school, we have our Zoom prayer meeting, uh, we have our interfaith council coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, these are events for training, growing, and encouraging, finding ways to embrace our community. Uh, I really had an enjoyable discussion. Thank you, Barry. We, Barry just brought such a delight to the conversation on the nature of man. It's valued. It is important. Number five, the body is one of forgiven sinners. Now, I want to pause right here. If you don't feel you're forgiven right now, we can lay hands on you. And don't take that the wrong way. Follow what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you here this morning celebrating the fact that you are forgiven for everything in your life. Amen. I mean, when we come together, do we see each other in that context? We're talking about a safe church, Mary. We're glad you walked into a safe church, all right? The body is one of forgiven sinners, extending grace and unconditional love. Now, those were the easy ones. Number six. The church has a horizontal relational emphasis. That means that we reach out to other people this direction all the way around. We see that happening in this church, and it's really delightful, as well as a vertical one that we do not forget who we are in Christ. That those two dimensions, that if the church is not going both directions, and may I say sometimes at the same time, then we would not be a safe church. The relationship between people is seen as part of spirituality as well as a relationship with God. Number seven, the church sees brokenness, struggle, and inability as what God is in the process of transforming. It's our privilege to support and encourage each other as God works. Number eight, there are opportunities for all to serve others through a variety of ministries. That is happening in our church. A committed church, committed to pray, pausing just a commercial marvelous, okay. <laughs> committed to pray, encourage, and support your ministry. This must be mutual. We are a safe church if we are supporting each other. So I've had that in my file from workers meeting probably for about, well, I would say probably 25 years. And, and this is coming through conference administration and they're looking at how do we really develop safe churches? And I think it's time we have that conversation. How are we doing in fulfilling those responsibilities? So the first one, grace received by faith in Christ is preached from the pulpit and is the foundation for how people are to be treated. I'll say this again later. Grace is always the manifestation of the power of God towards you as a human being. If you're going to extend grace, then you are extending something you have received from God and you are reaching out and extending that to someone else. 
Grace is always a divine experience in our life. Faith is our willingness to say yes and receive the experience that comes in Christ and that we are faithful in that message. So I want to just walk through some texts that are an affirmation of this. Um, I think that's brought to you by Harley. It didn't quite sound like a Honda or a Yamaha. Close, though. Pardon? Hey, I have, I have actually sat on a 1936 Indian. Yeah, it was lovely. It was my brother's. Yeah. I wish he had it today. I'd sell it and buy a new house. Okay, but that's another story. Therefore, having been justified by faith, I cannot stress how important doctrines are. The word didache, doctrine, simply means the teaching of or about God. That's what a doctrine is. It's really never more than that. It's never less than that. Sometimes we think that our message as uh, an Adventist message to go to the whole world is to espouse all 28 of those doctrines, and then we have done our duty. But there's this little lady that some time ago wrote something that was very, very unique. She wrote that the last message to go to the world was to be God is love. And that the message of justification by faith alone in verity would illuminate, listen carefully, the earth with the glory of God. And isn't it interesting she didn't say that about a body of doctrine? She wrote that about the core and the heartbeat of the message of what the church is about. The very pulse of who we are. I thought that was really an amazing thing because we often think that we have this duty to get people to eat right, act right, dress right, and be right. But that is not what God called us to be and to do. Therefore, having been justified by faith, Paul writes, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are an effective and safe church, this would be a place, listen carefully, where you come through the doors and enter into peace with God. And I'm going to tell you the need is immense outside the walls of this building. It is immense. But it is the purpose of why we are here. That we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand and we exult in hope of the glory of God. Now, this word exult, uh, what does exalt look like or sound like to you? To uplift. Okay, to uplift, okay. Something with a little bit more enthusiasm. That's a very interesting concept of exaltation. Uh, does it involve words of praise and gratitude? Maybe thanksgiving? Uh, more action. More action? More action. Ah, oh, interesting. And we exult in hope of the glory of God. How's your exalting going? I didn't ask which one. I just asked how it's going. It could be both. It depends on the day. That's an honest answer. I mean, if you, if you just look at these few simple words and, and you come down to this fact that there's this exaltation, there's this action, there's this enthusiasm, there's this depth, it's a description of us, of who we are as a safe church. I think my God always, writing to the church at Corinth, concerning you for the grace of God which was given you in Christ, that in everything 
You were enriched in him. What was left out of the enrichment? Whoa, nothing's left out. If you were to make a list of the everything you were enriched in, would it involve every detail of your day? What does this enrichment sound like and look like if this is the manifestation of grace and it affects everything in your life? What does it look like manifested in a safe church? I think it's a really beautiful passage that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you, I want to pay you a compliment. That word knowledge, okay? I, Will, I'm going to say this morning, every single comment that was made in this room was a manifestation, I believe, of that enrichment of God's grace in your life individually, brought forth as Will was leading out in the study and we're having this dynamic conversation, we are experiencing what God has enriched your mind with this morning. I mean, just stop and think about the interaction we're having in which God's grace is being manifested with the thoughts and the things you have learned in your life that are being brought in our conversation. See, when we talk about a safe church, it was safe to talk here this morning. It was enthusiastic. I think we had a little exaltation. Okay? And, and Will, you were amazing in the midst of exaltation. It was great. It, it, isn't it, when we stop and talk about a safe church, you see how personal this is? How it impacts each and every one of us? I, I also want to say that, and I'm not kidding, I'm really serious. Um, every time Sherry is not with me and I come, I have a therapy puppy or two that come and see me. I'm telling you that to me. I go home and tell Sherry about that. And, and she says, well, they're just trying to make you feel good because I'm not there. Okay. <laughs> and, and I say, you know, I think you're right. And, and I don't know that Barry even understands that he owns therapy dogs. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, what a joy. What a joy. I mean, when we talk about enrichment, and God wants to bring good things into your life. What does this word enrichment mean? To increase? To give you more? To take in more? I think it's a marvelous thing. I'm sorry? To strengthen. Strengthen things. Absolutely. In all speech, all knowledge, even as the testimony concerning Christ was confirmed in you. Continuing on. So that you are not lacking in any gift. Waiting eagerly. Wait, wait a minute. I'm going too fast. You're not lacking in any gift. Now, I want you to know that is y'all, third person plural. This is written to the church, right? So this is y'all. So read like this. So that y'all are not lacking. I mean, they've got it right in Tennessee, don't they? So, y'all are not lacking in any gift. How do you feel about that? How do you feel that you have access to any and every gift you need? Just, just let the Holy Spirit just write that deep into your heart. You have access to whatever it is that you need. Awaiting eagerly. Aren't aren't there some interesting words in here? Enrich, exalt, eagerly. Waiting eagerly for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end. Did you catch that? Your confirmation is in Christ. Till when? Whenever the end is. Isn't that amazing? You want to talk about healthy self-esteem here? It is Christ who is your help healthy self-esteem, who will confirm you to the end, blame, wait, blameless. What, who, who helped Paul write this? Blameless? 
Do you feel blameless this morning? Do you? I would have to ask the question, why not? If your confirmation is in the person of Jesus Christ, who has already credited to you everything you need for eternity, you know, this is a, kind of a hard one to take, isn't it? Our nature just recoils and say, no, no, you can't, you can't say that if I'm in Christ, I'm blameless. Well, I cannot wait for the day that in Christ you experience that freedom and that joy. As fleeting as it may be until your next person almost hits you with their car. And then you get to start all over again. Blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, every, see those words again? Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing, not some spiritual blessing. Do you see the difference? You see what, you see what God wants to bestow on us corporately as a church. Because these are written to churches. These are not written to individuals. This is a corporate body conversation of what a safe church sounds like and looks like. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing where? In the heavenly places. You know what's going on up there? Blessings. Blessings, Barry. Blessings. Are you a willing recipient Verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Sometimes as Christians, we begin to think that we're the one who do all, did all the choosing, right? Do you know why you are here this morning? If we're going to preach the word honestly, it's because he chose you and brought you to this moment in your life today. He, cho he chose us in him when? From the, yeah, from the very foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless before him. That is in Christ. Verse 5, in love, he predetermines or predestines us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. When did you discover you were actually adopted by the king of the universe? When did it settle in who your father is? Maybe you were the kid that when you were in high school that your dad bought you the Ferrari, right? Maybe you weren't. Just a Porsche. Who's your dad? Okay. Do you know who my dad is? Do you know how many solar systems my dad has compared to yours? You want to have an argument about that? Whose dad has the most solar systems? Do you know how many sons my dad has? And you can spell that two different ways. Both are good. Both work in this conversation. If you're a son or daughter and you walk through the doors of this church and we're talking about a safe church and anyone who walks through that door is family. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're family. I'm going to say I don't really care about their theology. I don't even care about their opinions. They're family. Now, of course, they should always agree with me, which is never going to happen, which I think is wonderful, because I wouldn't want you to be that bored. Okay? Will, will you let this just settle in that you walk through the doors as family every week? A safe church. 
according to the kind intentions of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, which He freely, freely, what's that word freely mean? Aren't there some cool words in these scriptures? Freely, I mean, how many have heard the phrase, there's no such thing as anything free in the American economy? Nothing is free. How many actually believe that? Please put your hands up. Because there is nothing that is free. In the, when they say free, you know that there's a hook on the other side of freedom. What about free will itself? Oh, yeah, I was talking economy. Oh, yeah. Uh, free will. That's a lively conversation. That's coming. Not today, but it's coming. To the praise of the glory of His grace, which He freely bestows on us in the Beloved, in Christ. Wait a minute. Oh, you found something free, John. Tell us about it. It's free grace. Wow. So there is something that exceeds earthly, isn't there? And the heavenly comes available to whom? Just those who go to church today? To every man, woman, and child on this planet. See, God's vision in a safe church, becomes our vision. And our vision changes as sons and daughters of God because now His vision becomes ours, and how do we see the world? Now from His point of view. The grace of God is the movement of God toward you and towards humanity. Ephesians 7 to 10, because of the sacrifice of the Messiah... His blood poured out on the altar of the cross. We are free people, free of penalties and punishments, chalked up by our misdeeds. Have you ever read this translation before? I, I'm going to tell you, I, I was looking at this passage, and I, I went into the Greek, and I'm, I'm just taking it apart, and I'm just digging down. There's some words in there. These words are so utterly amazing. And when I got done looking at these words, I said, you know, I know someone who's actually already been here and done this. And I'm going to read you what he came up with. Okay? So when I tell you there's really cool words that we've looked at so far, I want you to pay attention because this bears out in the original language. So hang on. This is really fun. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are free people free of penalties and punishments, chalked up by our misdeeds. Now, of course, I know that you are not people of misdeeds. Amen? No amen. I didn't get a single amen on that, I noticed. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. And when I saw this in the original language, I said, how on earth am I going to say this so you'll actually believe it? Abundantly free? Wow. He thought of everything, provided for everything we could possibly need. Now, you want to talk about a safe church? Let them walk through the doors of this church. Maybe this should be printed in the bulletin every week, but do you know we're only halfway through this passage? Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, His blood, letting us in on the plans, He took such delight in making. He set it all out before us in Christ. A long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in Him. Everything in the deepest heaven. Everything on planet Earth. It's from the Message Bible. Eugene Peterson. And I'm going to tell you, he basked himself in the original language and in multiple manuscripts. And he nailed it. It's beautiful. And it's true. It's true for us corporately as a body and coming together to be a safe church. With a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens, things on earth in him, also we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined. That means predetermined according to his purpose who works 
all things after the counsel of his will. To the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, there's another one of those great words. I need to stop right here for just a moment and have a reflective moment. Do you really believe? Really? Do you believe that all of these things are true? Also, believed results in you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view of the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. Wow. That is just the first principle of a safe church. I have a short conversation about truth preached without compromise, and then we're done. By the way, did you notice all the people on the other side of the lake? Mm -hmm. The multitude? There are some amazing artists. Someday we're going to commission John, and he's going to produce some fabulous paintings for us. He doesn't know that yet. I, he's looking at me going, <laughs> okay. Safe church principle number two, truth is preached without compromise. You know, you just sort of experience that, right? We walk through those passages very quickly, but we did not compromise. We let them speak the word as only the word has the power to speak. We didn't have to delete any words. We didn't have to change anything. We didn't even have to argue. They just stand on their own. There is not a reason to compromise. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The truth, listen carefully, is a man. We are saved by a man. Our sanctification is acted by a man. Our forgiveness is given by a man. Freely, abundantly. To every person on this planet that was chosen, listen carefully, from the foundation as we read earlier. John 17, 17 to 19, sanctify them in the truth. The Sabbath is a sanctified day. You've heard me say this before. It's sanctified, why? How is it sanctified? Why is it called a sanctified Sabbath? Why is it then called holy? Because what God calls his possession and sets aside is bestowed holiness on it. That is why the seventh day Sabbath is holy. It's because God set it aside as his possession. If you are sanctified in the truth, which means you are, what? Made, go ahead and just say it. See how it feels. Well, yeah. We're not really into exalting yet today, I can tell. We're kind of hesitant there. Sanctify them. Make them holy in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world for their sakes. I sanctify myself that they, may, they themselves may also be sanctified in the truth. Your word is truth. There's the words of Jesus, and if you took this on a narrow translation, you would say, then the only truth I need is the red letters of the Bible. That would be a very, very narrow interpretation. But the fact of the matter is, we know that Jesus was inspiring the word from the beginning of the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. 
So when we're talking about the word, your word is truth, we're talking about the whole book. Not just the parts we like. The whole book. Two verses, truth without hesitation, without reservation, is found in the person of Jesus Christ. First, and in the word, second. There is a thing called truth. And it is true that is a very happy moose. Uh, Wyoming's just over the hill if you head up north. Uh, in the Tetons, this is in the fall, as you can see, color is changing. The creek is down considerably low. What do you see in that picture? What is that moose lacking here? You in the picture? Okay, maybe. <laughs> I would say a male moose. <laughs> a male moose, yeah. Uh, he's actually not far away. Uh, that picture comes later. Um, so... Is there enough grass there? You think there's enough water there? If, if God feels this way about creation and wildlife, to care for them, as this picture simply tells the story, can we not find more exaltation in our everyday life can we not find more freedom in Christ in our everyday life? Can we not find more joy unlimited? Can we not encounter gifts we have not yet realized that are made available to you in Christ? Can we not bring all those together in this room and become a safe church? And I think you are safe people. Don't misunderstand me. But I want to walk through this because I want us to say, what am I really committing to if I want this church to be safe? Now I'll push the buttons. That's what I, you've been waiting for me to do because you know I do this. The world is going crazy out there. Minute by minute. And it's getting crazier. Are you ready? Are you ready for them to walk in through the doors of this church because they have met you and the love of God manifested in your heart that they want to be here in this room because, friends, they're coming. Are you ready? That's why we're having this conversation. If we are not preparing ourselves to welcome any and all who will grace through the doors of this church. We will not be safe. Heaven forbid we drive someone away from God. Shame on us. I hope you enjoyed those first two points. Okay, there are nine. We want to walk carefully through them and look at them. And at the end, maybe we'll print them out and let you just ponder them, take them home, process them and say, am I really committed to my church being this church that anyone can walk through the doors and embrace the love of God here in this room? You know, Will, you started this. The clock says I'm four minutes early. I don't know what, I'm just speechless. I'd sing you a song, but I'd probably prefer I didn't. But thank you for doing that. It gave me the courage to do the same. Please.
That was lovely. Thank you for the meditation. Let's pray, Father. New life is just bursting everywhere out of the ground. I saw the calves coming in, maybe a hundred new ones just out there with their moms. Life in spring is amazing. Father, may we walk out of this room exalting all that you have provided freely to us in your grace. May we find joy in the truth of the sanctifying power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. May we be enriched. May we be filled until we come together again. Thank you for your blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen.